I'm going to revisit the idea of the different form for the definition of the derivative, along with being much more flexible in the notation that we use. Remember I said this equivalently is the definition of the derivative. It's just the one that's algebraically more challenging for us to deal with. Know that if you see this on a quiz or on exam, it's just telling you find the derivative. Unless it specifically tells you that you need to use that form of it, you can use any form for the definition of the derivative that you want to. I've never seen an AP question that forces you to algebraically use that definition. However, I have seen questions on the BC exam that force you to use the one where H approaches zero, and that's why we're working with it so much now. Just like we did on the example of V of T and A of T and all those kinds of things, know that your notation doesn't have to be in any certain variable. You could see X's and C's and T's and P's. Be very flexible with your notation. These two, although they look different and use different variables, are still the slope of the tangent line at some input value of X. Let's talk about continuity. What does the derivative tell us about our function? Does it tell us whether our function is continuous or not? So we need to understand the fundamental idea that a derivative is the slope of the tangent line to a curve at a given point is really important to us. We agree that at some point, here we're calling it C, there has to be an output on the curve. There can't be a hole or a jump or a wiggle. Therefore, when we say f prime exists at C, f has to be continuous at C. The only way that the derivative can exist at some input value on a function is for the function to be defined there. So to be differentiable at some input value automatically gives us continuity. If a function is differentiable at a point, it is continuous at that point. If the derivative exists, then the function is continuous. We're guaranteed of that. For the visual learners in the room, we're fixing to draw some graphs so I can illustrate that visually. But I want to build this using the verbal equivalent first so you understand what we're talking about. I do want to make a note, and I'll draw a counterexample when we look at it visually. The converse of this is not true. Just because a function is continuous does not mean it is differentiable. Let's put that in your notes. Just because a function is continuous everywhere does not mean the function is differentiable everywhere. Differentiability gives us continuity, but continuity does not guarantee us differentiability. Not true in both directions. So a function can be continuous, but not differentiable at a point. What we're looking for, for the derivative to exist, is a smooth and continuous function everywhere. Here graphically is how we determine whether our derivative exists. We ask ourselves, at any given point, can I draw on both sides of that point, meaning both directions horizontally, on both sides of that point, can I draw a tangent line that very near that point of tangency, the line, the tangent line,
acts like the function near the point of tangency. I don't care, the further I get away from that point of tangency, I don't care that the line is not acting like the curve. If I can determine anywhere, anywhere at all, that on both sides I can draw a line that very near that point of tangency acts like the curve, then the derivative exists. And by the way, we're far above the mathematics that says the tangent line can only intersect our curve in one point. Not true. We're only concerned about what's happening near this point of tangency. I don't care what that line does the further away from that point of tangency that we get. So if we have a smooth graph, if our function is smooth and continuous, then that function is going to be differentiable. It is crucial that we can draw a little piece of that tangent line very near the point of tangency. Here is a continuous function. How do I know it's continuous? Because I drew the whole thing without lifting my pen off of the paper. So in order for this function to be differentiable everywhere, I need to be able at any input value to draw a little piece of the tangent line and very near that point of tangency, that tangent line needs to share outputs with the curve. And so far, every point that I've looked at, this is a true statement. However, for this one, this is not a true statement for this input value. Here on this function, f of x, at input values of c, the function's continuous, f of c exists, but it's not differentiable. The derivative does not exist at x equals c. That derivative will not exist. How do I know? Because graphically, I cannot draw a tangent line that on either side of that input value shares outputs with the function. Graphically, that's what I'm looking for. It's an intuitive idea of whether a function is differentiable. So where a function takes a sharp turn and on one side of an input value versus the other side of the input value, if the outputs are acting very differently, if the function takes a sharp turn, the derivative is not going to exist there. We'll see other examples of where the derivative doesn't exist, but there's an intuitive idea of the fact that if the function is differentiable at an input value c, then the function is continuous at that same input value. However, if the output exists, but the derivative does not, f of x is continuous but not differentiable. So there's a visual example of how a function can be differentiable, therefore continuous, but just because a function is continuous doesn't mean that function is differentiable. Here's another type of problem that I've seen on the BC exam. The given limit is a derivative, but of what function and at what point? So this is saying this is the definition of the derivative. We need to find what f of x is, and we need to find the input value that this derivative is being evaluated at. So let's go back to the definition of the derivative. We have some function evaluated at x plus h 
minus some function evaluated at x all over h. So this is f of x plus h. This is f of x, specifically at a certain x value. Well, we can just look where the x's reside in the definition of our derivative, and we can clearly say that that's happening at x equal 5. So now, let's replace, let's go to this chunk right here, and let's replace 5 with x. Do you see that that's easily how we can find what the function was? So the function had to be 2x cubed, and the point at which the derivative is being evaluated is x equal 5. Something that we are going to become very adept in doing is looking at the graph of a function and talking about what's going on on the derivative of that function and even graphing the derivative of that function. So we're going to work an example where we're going to sketch the graph of the derivative function by looking at what's going on to the original function. So here's the original function. This is the graph of f of x. If we can determine what the slope is at those given values, then we could graph those points and we could connect them and come up with the graph of the derivative function. So at input values of x equal negative 1, we want to know what the slope of the tangent line is there. Well, we're only really defined on the right side. So I'm going to use from the right side of input values of negative 1, I'm going to try to estimate. We're just estimating, so we don't have to be exact, what the slope of the line is at input values of negative 1. And it appears to me that that slope is roughly, I mean, it's just an estimate, it's roughly negative 1. The slope at 0, here's x equals 0, that appears to be a slope of 0. At input values of x equal 1, my tangent line would have roughly this curve. It's not exact, but it's approximately positive 1. At input values of 2, if that's the point on my curve, it appears that the slopes are once again 0. And at input values of 3, I have a negatively sloped line, but if this is a slope of negative 1, it looks like it's much steeper than that. So I'm not sure exactly what it is. I don't have way to, a way to exactly tell at this point. We'll call that negative 2. Now I have five points that lie on the graph of my derivative function, f prime of x. f prime of x contains the point negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 0, and 3, negative 2. So let's plot those points on the same graph here as the original function f of x. There is a point on the derivative function. Here's another point on the derivative function. Here's another point on the derivative function. Let's see. Uh, 2, 0. There's another point on the derivative function. And 3, negative 2. Now, I don't know how curvy it is. I don't know how linear it is. I'm not really sure. We learn all those things later. But I can tell you that it probably behaves, I don't know, something along those lines. There's the graph of f prime of x. And the only thing you gave me to find that graph was the original function f of x. Well, if I realize that the derivative is just the slope of the line tangent to the x input values everywhere, I can draw the graph of f prime. We're going to do much, much more of this as we move along. The relationships between a function and its derivative are really important to us, and we'll get better and better and better at this idea.